There's an ancient script that says, without a vision, we die. And if I can get people caught up in thinking about where they would like to go, who they would like to meet, the kind of income they would like to have, the kind of money they would like to share, the kind of skills they would like to develop, the influence they would like to have, the reputation they would like to build. Would you like to be an entrepreneur? Would you like to have a masterful management career? Would you like to be a better parent? Uh, what kind of influence would you like to have on the people around you? Would you like to uh, influence the industry you're in? Uh, there's a whole wide range of things that we need not lack for appetite of things to accomplish. And that's called the promise of the future. And without that promise, life becomes a little less worth living. If the promise is clear, we will pay the disciplines, we'll pay the price, we'll read the books, we'll take the classes, uh, we'll learn the skills. So that's one of the first things is to articulate the promise. Big job parents have these days is getting kids to see the promise of the future, the possibilities, the opportunities. You've got to have family goals. You've got to have personal goals. Worthy projects you would like to support. Not just income goals. It's not to have a home and a nice car and clothes to wear. It's the full variety of things. If you can develop an appetite for all of that. I call them reasons. Reasons make the difference. If you have enough reasons, you can do spectacular things. Well, a lot of the immigrants now that come to America from other countries have taught us some great lessons. They're some of the best students in school. The Russians that came to Israel, I'm telling you, they're now the leaders in industry. They are so grateful for liberty and freedom and for a chance. Uh, they need no guarantees. They don't need to be taken care of. All they need is an open door, a ladder to climb, a place to start, uh, somebody to give them a chance and away they go. And I think we've had it so easy in America for so long uh, that we have lost that sharp edge. And uh, who knows, all the shakeup these last few years, the walls have come tumbling down. But in America, we need a whole new sense of personal drive personal ambition that will take whatever we got and see what we can make out of it. If it's pennies, we start with pennies. If it's painful, you start painful. You know, if you're ill, you start ill. If you don't have much of a chance, you just start with not much of a chance, but see what you can make of it. And I think some of the people in other countries now where freedom is finally intact, the walls have come down that are starting that journey could teach us a lot about taking what we've got, making something valuable out of it, rather than expecting someone to give us something. And the stories are always fascinating to us all about where people started, but where they finally ended up, what they finally accomplished, with dangers along the way, of course. But that's what philosophy is all about. Human philosophy is to give us guidance to avoid the dangers and take advantage of the opportunities. Number one, to earlier recognize the dangers and to also earlier pick up the opportunities and make something of them. But I'm constantly amazed at the human spirit, human possibilities, people with the most enormous struggling problems still uh, manage to rise above them and do something noble, something powerful, something wondrous. I'm always intrigued by that. And I'm intrigued with myself, uh, how I act like I act, how I respond like I respond. What is this human adventure on the spinning planet? I'm intrigued by all that. But America, nationally, industries, commerce, business, companies, corporations, institutions, education, politics, all the rest, involving human beings is an intriguing adventure. I think we need to be curious about it how it works and how we can best play our part in family, in community, citizen, company, salesperson. Curiosity, develop an appetite for that. And uh, just start by saying, I'm going to systematically make some inquiry. I'm gonna be a better reader. I'm going to listen better. I'm going to search. 
and start that whole process. And the more you do it, I'm telling you, you'll find something fascinating. That'll lead to something else fascinating. And the first thing you know, you've got this on an upward trend. Uh, to become valuable as a leader, to become valuable in articulating um, the challenge of the future competing among the nations of the world. Uh, we've got our work cut out for us. But it starts at home, being valuable as a teacher. The key is not to just be a teacher, but be a student teacher. Uh, don't just be a salesperson, be a student salesperson. Don't just be a father, be a student father. Uh, don't just be the leader of a company, but be a student leader. And whether it's company, corporation, government, school, community, home, family, office, basketball team, baseball team, wherever people gather for whatever reason, if each one brings a better value to that enterprise, to that game, to that family, to that business, to that office, we've got a good chance of competing well among the nations of the world and who knows what all we can accomplish in the 21st century. The ideas that I share with people these days so dramatically affected my own life back in those early days, I never get tired of sharing the story and the principles, the things that changed my income, my bank account, my outlook on life, got me setting goals, building a library, working on disciplines uh, that I never thought I could master that I did. In sharing all those ideas with people, then getting the letters and the phone calls. Uh, when I travel around the world, people still come up and say, you know, five years ago, I attended your seminar and here's what's happened. A lady showed me the other day in Australia notes she had taken 14 years ago. She said, I still use these notes in working in my business. Uh, here's what happened to my relationship with my family. Those letters, those phone calls, those personal uh, testimonials for me, that's what I live for. Uh, I don't need the money. I take the money, but I don't need the money. But I do need the joy that comes from people saying what you said was valuable for me. And thank you very much for sharing. That's heavyweight stuff. You can't buy it with money small pieces at a time. Best is to substitute a poor habit with a good habit. Uh, if you've got some bad habits as far as your health is concerned, if you start some good ones. My mama taught an apple a day. And my father will be 92, he's never been ill, I've never been ill, my children, my grandchildren, mama taught us so well those simple, basic, good habits of good health that we've followed all these years. And the payoff is extraordinary. So maybe you've got something like smoking, maybe that you shouldn't do, but rather than just trying to quit that, what if you started something positive and you got so inspired about doing that, that that inspired you then to start changing something that was negative. Success is looking at your own desires, looking at your own possibilities and then stretching yourself and seeing if you can become all that you can become, earn all that you can earn, share all that you can share make steady progress in that direction, to me that's success. If there's books provided that you don't read, classes provided that you don't take, music provided that you don't listen to, ideas provided that you ignore, places to go of learning that you could find contact with ideas that could change your life and never take advantage of it, that's the big tragedy, to have so much brought to your fingertips and not to be excited about it. But that's what these seminars are for. That's what books are for. That's what uh, messages like this are for, is to remind people of what all is available. Let us not be cynical, but let us be thankful and reach out and appropriate what's available and let it affect our lives now and in the future. And my study in the possibilities just overwhelm me as to where people can begin and then finally where they can go, what they can start with and what they can finally become. And to first of all, I think recognize that is an incredible, exciting adventure. And then if you start working with it, what could I really do? If I learned the lessons, adopted the disciplines, read the books, uh, fed on the ideas like bread for my mind, uh, what could I really accomplish? I've got a good phrase, everything by longevity tends to get off course. 
Everything needs refinement. There isn't anything that doesn't need to be looked at fairly often. Uh, I've seen more than one person say, hey, I've got plenty of money in the bank. Uh, I'm doing well, but some systems are not working. And failure to take a look at some systems that aren't working, you can get faked out by money in the bank. Uh, you've got to look at all areas. An ancient script says the little foxes spoil the vines. And you look at this vineyard and it looks great, but it's got little foxes. And it doesn't matter if it's the president or the government or the senator or the senate or the company or the corporation or a millionaire or a billionaire. All systems need to be regularly checked. So don't let too much time go by before you take a look and make sure all systems are working. And if you do it with your health, if you do it wherever you are, if the corporation does it, if the government does it, we'll all be better off for the future. Starting with something simple. Mama said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Good question for my audience today. What if that's true? Someone says, well, if that's true, that would be easy to do. But here's the challenge. What's easy to do is easy not to do. Uh, what if you should be walking around the block every day for your good health and you don't? You're not on a good track. If you should and you could and you don't, it's called formula for disaster. But self-improvement is called starting with the most immediate thing that comes to your mind that you could do to improve your health, your life, your income, your future. And if it's an apple a day, start there. If it's a walk around the block, start there. If you need to build your personal development library, go get a book and say, this is the next book of my new library. Um, if you need to attend a seminar, go. If you need to keep a journal, Mr. Schoff taught me to keep a journal starting at age 25. It represents a major part of my library, my own journals, notes that I've copied over the years, little poems I've written down, things that I've gathered that are invaluable to me, my business, as well as my uh, lecturing career. Uh, go get a journal, start with an apple a day, uh, walk around the block. You know, it's not going to come in some great package out of the sky. But each little thing you start with called self-improvement, whether it's health or sign up for a class that you've been intending to take and you've put it off, uh, neglect does us all in. Neglect has us by the throat, shutting off air supply, money supply, and every other supply. But if you reverse that process, and it doesn't matter what you start with, just say, I should, I could, I don't, I will now say, I should, I could, I will. And if it's an apple a day, start there. Getting a journal, make an entry. Go get that next book of your thriving library. Uh, sign up for a class, and you have now begun the process. And that's all you need to do is begin the process. And the early return from those early steps will inspire you to start taking all the rest. When I used to cross my fingers and say, I sure hope things will change for me. And he said, Mr. Owen, for things to change for you, you've got to change. I used to hope the economy would change or my boss would change and become more benevolent. I used to hope that circumstances would change, the difficulties would go away. But he said, things aren't going to change. It's going to be like it's always been. But if you will change, everything will change for you. If you'll get better, everything will get better for you. That sort of is the centerpiece of the philosophy I've been trying to teach all these years. And I think that's one of the best quotes. It's a promise he gave me. If you will change, everything will change for you. But if you won't change, the next five years will probably be just about like the last five. But anytime you want to, you can learn from the last five, make the next five years of your life totally different from the last five. If you'll make some little, simple, beginning changes for your health, for your income, uh, being more valuable in the marketplace, things you want for yourself and for your family, and all the rest. Look over your plans. Maybe you've got too small of plans. By the time we've finished here, you might have scrapped some old plans and made some new ones. Or made sure that the plan you've got is well-tuned and well-refined. As we speak, almost hourly and daily, 
continually revising, continually shaping, continually refining. That's going on while we speak. We should all do the same thing. I'm fine-tuning my own plan. I've got some plans for myself, my own growth, my own development, fine-tuning my own skills. So look over your plans for the future, your plans for your family, your plans for your health, your plans for your organization. Make sure they're in place. Now make this quick list. Number one, for us to really count on the future and to count on each other, here's a good list. Number one, morality, doing what's right. Here's what I learned early in my career. Always remember whoever you're working with, this is what you want to occur later, that they found out it was easier than you said and that it was more than you promised. Here's the key, better understated than overstated. Here's what's next in the vocabulary for leadership for our future. Make these notes now. Next is truth. To deal in truth, we're going to speak the truth. We want to build on truth, what is right. Here's what's next, responsibility. Accepting responsibility. Next is courage. When you're discouraged with three in a row who say no, just remember, let your courage now show to talk to the next three. Because out of the next three, one may be the person that helps you. Public courage, private courage, the courage when no one's around, when you make those resolves and decide for yourself, you're going to do something, make some changes, whatever. Courage of thought. Here's an excellent one. Courage to change. I have to work on this one. Courage to be silent. When it would be better to listen than to talk. Here's a big one. Courage to forgive. Here's an important one. Courage to compromise. You give a little, I'll give a little. Somehow we'll work it out. Here's the next one, courage to risk. That's what life really is all about. Not an undue risk, but risk. If you want the harvest in the fall, you must risk in the spring the seed to sow. You've got to risk some of your time. My grandkids ask me every time, and my family, why would you go spend the day with those people in Hawaii rather than spending the day with us. I've got to give them some excellent reasons. And then when I see them shortly, they will ask me, was it worth it to go spend the day with them and not with us? So how I ration out my time and how you ration out your time is so important. Have the courage to make those wise decisions. Here's the next part of the list. Keep your word. What you promise, make sure you fulfill. Next, admit your mistakes. Sometimes you've got to admit them publicly. Sometimes you've got to admit them to each other. Here's the big one, to admit them to yourself. And then here's sometimes, this could be some of the greatest new beginnings is when you say, I'm sorry. It's a chance to start all over. Next is faith, faith in others, faith in your family. A big one is faith in yourself. Here's a unique one, a touch of humility. The rich must be taught not to be arrogant. The poor must be taught not to be cynical. Next, this one helped save my life. Work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. But my last word would be, hey, start with something simple. Keep adding value to your life. And you can do the most extraordinary things. And why not you? If, you know, a boy from the farms of Idaho, and if we had a parade of American success stories here, they would all say the same thing. Why not you? Uh, we started with nothing. Why not you?
You know, we started behind. Why not you? If we can do it, you can do it. That's my message.